hello. Yeah, please signal if I start to wobble with the microphone. Um, so, as the in introduction stated, I'm a course director up the road at Leeds Beckett University, and I have a specialist interest in working with families who have a loved one who's experienced psychosis. And actually, this has moved a bit on since I, I was actually um, invited to present today. I'm now working with families um, using group delivery for dementia as well. Um, when I was thinking about what to put pack into 10 minutes, I started to bore myself rigid and um, I decided I would attempt a parallel process with you and um, let you know that I'm also an adoptive parent and I have been on quite a journey. So since writing the brief, I've decided I'd like to call this a dose of my own medicine um, because I have been working in the field of psychosis for some time and um, I started out being given a great opportunity of um, additional training in cognitive behavioral therapy for psychosis and alongside that I was also given an opportunity to work with the families of people who experience psychosis and I'd spent some time as an occupational therapist working in mental health and I'd always warmly greeted family members in my view but I felt I had very inadequate tools to support them and this course really enabled me to start to think about how I could provide effective support and at least open a meaningful dialogue with families and carers of people who experience psychosis. Since becoming a parent myself, I've had to um, also have that lived experience of what it feels like from the other side of the fence, where you experience crisis and you need help really quickly and immediately. And I have found that some of the tools that I had already been prescribing um, within a group context um, for the work I did with people experiencing psychosis have really helped and supported me. So what are the challenges when you are in crisis and you have a family member who you live with and they are presenting in a way that you find challenging, difficult to understand. Well, on an emotional level, I think as parents you immediately feel that you are doing something wrong. You feel you're inadequate, you feel guilt. You then have an additional question mark in your mind and my journey into kind of um, becoming an adoptive parent immersed me in the language of trauma and adverse childhood life events. So immediately surfacing is, is this question of what is going wrong and what has happened and is this a situation that is never going to resolve itself. So in my work with families, I've worked a lot in a group process and again for myself as a parent I found myself needing to access that group process. Um, as an academic I teach endlessly around group facilitation and group process and I draw on um, a psychotherapist, a very well-known psychotherapist called Yalom who talks about um, there being 11 curative factors that go into being in a group and consciously bringing these to mind in some of the designs of group process around psychosis and dementia has really helped but also in my own experience as well. So he talks about us always needing a sense of connection to other people and one of the 
challenges for families when they're going through crisis, whether that be a mental health crisis um, or otherwise, is that there can be a feeling of isolation. In mental health, there are other experiences that are not necessarily um, the experiences of people who are going through crisis that may be attached to physical health. So there is stigma, there is shame, and there is a sense of responsibility for what is happening. So when you reach out for help, you are reaching out to feel that you're not alone, that you have a connection to other people, that what you're going through is not unique. And for myself, I found and I'd heard as well from families I supported was that I found that I was very sensitive to any critical content that people gave to me at this difficult time. So I had to make a very conscious decision to clear away from my social group those people that may decide that they might problem solve and they might problem solve by criticizing what I was trying to do. Um, and I found that that was really helpful and some of that is also echoed in some of the literature for psychosis about the family environment needing to be calm. I also revisited some of the communication strategies that I had been teaching people to use to, um, to, to reduce stress in the, in the family context. For people um, in crisis or living with psychosis, the longer it goes on, the harder it is for interpersonal relationships to stay the same because people move from flexible thinking into more rigid ways of coping. So for myself, I only had a limited number of ways I could solve my problem. So I needed to extend my, um, my act beyond what was in my household in order to get new information. And for people and families living with psychosis, stigma quite often prevents people from reaching out. It, becomes a barrier. So when mental health services actually, at times, if, if, if they're not um, intervening at an early stage, quite often the family have been on quite a long journey before they actually get to meet somebody who is um, a member of perhaps an early intervention team. The other advice I had to take was I needed to understand that I just needed support that was 24-7 because my, my um, difficulties did not happen neatly in a nine-to-five. They usually happened exactly outside that. So I had to cast around and find somebody, whether that might be professional and or otherwise, who would be available to me at any point. And I think, again, this can be one of the challenges families have in dementia care and or psychosis is that services sometimes um, are constructed around a nine to five model, although there can be out of hours, sometimes it might be skeleton staff and some of the um, the challenges families have is getting help and support at the time they need it. So. My, my advice to anybody going through this is, is to try to think of those people in your life, use your community who do not mind to be phoned at difficult times of night. <laughs> One minute already? Okay. So uh, finally, the advice I had to give myself was that self-care is really important when times are difficult. And um, self-care does 
does not mean that you're going to the spa. It is very small things that you can offer yourself in difficult times, and this, these may be themes that have come up. But also, I think when you're in, in crisis or in a, a longer, what feels like a caring relationship, it can be hard to give yourself permission. So it's about thinking almost consciously what you do to make yourself feel a little better in those moments. I think I will leave it there, but so those are my thoughts, so thank you.